win over American earlier in the week. In the game, they dropped 98 points. And an offense this year for the Retrievers has been stellar. But Pitt wins the tip, and we take a look at the starting five for the Panthers. Femi Cali alongside Jeffress, Santos, Oladapo, and Big John Hughley down low for the Panthers, who enter at 2-3. and three. Odicali with the drive off the glass and in to start the scoring for the Panthers today. Nice use of his jab step to create a little space from the little guy. Odicali had 14 in the loss to Vanderbilt on Wednesday as we take a look at the starting fire for the Retrievers. That's Dmitry Spazajevich down low. He's joined in the starting lineup by Darnell Rogers, LJ Owens, Jacob Bunyasith, and Keandre Kennedy who we mentioned earlier is the leading scorer on the season for UMBC. When I say little, when I'm referring to Rodgers, it's, it's definitely his size. His heart is huge. He played with a lot. He's fierce. Defensively, he's going to get after it, so you better keep an eye on him. Yeah, that's what Coach told us. Jim Ferry, head coach for UMBC, loves Darnell Rodgers. Said Rodgers put himself in the transfer portal before Ferry got there. This is Ferry's first season at UMBC, and Said he wanted to meet him and was kind of shocked when he stepped out of the car, Julius, but has not thought about his height ever since because of his toughness. He gets it done in between the lines. That's all that matters. And he said, don't miss dribble around Darnell Rogers. He's tough on the defensive side, too. I'm very familiar with a guy like that. John Linehan at Providence was one of those guys. You hate to see him. So Rogers defending Oda Cali in the early going here, but this is Hughley. Backing down Spazajevich in the post. He's called for a travel. About a minute into this one, we see Jim Ferry here. His first season at UMBC was Penn State's interim head coach last season, leading the Nittany Lions to an 11 and 14 record and 7 and 12 in the Big Ten for Ferry and the Nittany Lions. Missed shot on the wing there. Jeffress grabbing the rebound. Outlet to Oda Kelly. He'll take a pull up three, and he knocks it down. Something good to see for the Panthers, a three-point shot. Knocked down early. Spasijevich, the drive there, can't get the roll. Another rebound for Jeffress. Oda Cali drives, kicks to Jeffress here. Oladapo now, backing down Bunyasith. Has it taken away there, and Kennedy comes up with it for the Retrievers. Like one of the keys is to go inside for the Panthers. I don't doubt one bit. Something you got to keep doing. And yeah, they got to get the ball to that guy, right? Big John pulling down the rebound for the Panthers there. Santos finds Hughley. Just to top the elbow there. Can't get the roll. Rebound, Spazajevich. Drive here, LJ Owens. He's defended by Oladapo. Got to let your guy Kennedy touch it. Get him involved. Kennedy leading scorer for the Retrievers. Fade away off the glass and in. There he is. He has a great skill set. Shoot off the dribble, shoot the three, get to the basket. He's a good player. Only two starts last season for Keandre Kennedy. But in the first season under Jim Ferry, Kennedy breaking out. 14.6 points a game for him in five games this year. Here's Santos on the drive. He takes the pull up off the front rim, and Santos trying to get his own rebound. Well, commits a foul. Little drive to his left. Normally, players like to go to the offhand when shooting off the dribble. For all the players out there, you want to stop somebody, force them to a strong hand. I bet it's going to be a little more difficult for him to shoot that pull-up jump shot. Yeah, Kennedy's got a good mid-range game at six foot six, senior from Atlanta, Georgia. Nice pass inside there to Owens. Owens with the turnaround hook shot for two. It's just bread and butter right here, Femi and Hughley in a pick and roll situation. But Cali can't hit the jump shot that time. Kennedy. Over to Bunyasith, they'll dump it down low. Spazajevich trying to work on Hughley with the left hand. No good. Rebound Oda Kelly. Pushes up the floor to Santos in transition. Off the glass and foul called. Nate Santos will head to the line. 
It's the best offense ever. Get it in transition. We get it in transition. We don't have to wait for the coach to make the call. We don't want to run plays anyway. Am I right, Jason? That's right. <laughs> hey, Julius, how about what this guy's done as a freshman in his last couple games? Double-digit points. Had 11 against Vandy, 14 against Towson. And, you know, K Coach Capel told us that they did not necessarily expect him to play the role that he has so far in this year. But you lose Nike Sabani, you lose Ithiel Horton, and suddenly Nate Santos has become a crucial player for the Panthers. Absolutely. It's just great experience for him. You know, I'm sure he's getting more and more confident, you know, in his game and in the knowledge that he has to get being a freshman, learning the new system. Like everybody's bigger. The players are faster. So, you know, he's, he's ahead of the curve. The more minutes that he gets, you know, the faster he's, he's going to improve. Oh, yes, Jeff. If you could point to one or two guys since the start of the season that have grown the most for the Panthers, who would it be? First name he gave us was Nate Santos. He gets the start here, just his sixth collegiate game for the Panthers. Now he defends Spazajevich, contests the shot, forces a miss, rebound Noah Collier, who's new to the game, along with Jamarius Burton and Mogi. Open Oda Cali for three. Once more, Femi from downtown. It looks like they're daring him to shoot it, and he's shooting it in rhythm, so now it's time to reconsider for the retrievers. Julius, if he develops that outside shot and he shoots it like he is today, he's a dangerous player out of Cali. Absolutely. Outside, Owens, no good. Rebound on the weak side from Burton. Burton working on Kennedy here. Kicks out, opens Santos, Owens on him. 16 on the shot clock for Odakali and the Panthers. Finds Mo Gee, mismatch here. He's on Rogers. Now they swing to Santos, back to Burton. Six to shoot now for Pitt. Odakali, he'll try another. Not that time. Santos, offensive rebound. Femi said, heat check. I made the first two. You got to <laughs> let me shoot the third one. You got to try it, right? <laughs> you got to. Maybe one more. No, he'll go inside. Goes up strong. Can't get the roll. Rebounds Pazajevic for UMBC. Got a location. There's shooters. one from Bunyasif. Transition, perfect time to shoot the three ball. Guys scrambling, trying to locate someone to defend. You're a little late. They'll knock it down. Retrievers coming off a great three-point shooting night against American. Dump down low to Collier this time. Collier, nice move in the low block for two. It wasn't just a good three-point shooting night for UMBC. They shot 69.9% in the win over American. That's an NCAA single-game record. This season, <laughs> I would say those are two talented players. So you know, he obviously know how to recruit from that standpoint. Hey, they turned out okay, right? <laughs> Just okay. <laughs> <laughs> two point lead for Pitt here. 14 to go in the first half. Mo Gee with it on the wing. He can move. The transfer from Stony Brook. This is Jamarius Burton. Uses a screen from Collier. Finds Gee on the outside, and Gee knocks it down. The third three-pointer of the day already for the Panthers. How about that for a 6-10 stretch four for you? Knocking down the three. Mogee at 6'10 from Staten Island, New York. Came over from Stony Brook. He was America East Defensive Player of the Year last season for Stony Brook. And knocks down the three that time for the Panthers. But Sith hits his second from downtown today. Good D, better offense. Booney Smith with 14 against American on Tuesday, following it up with a solid start here in this one. He's got six. Burton, a nice pull up, contested, forces a miss. Got to stay down on the shot fakes. Shot fake worked, but could not execute. Rebound Guy out to Oda Cali. He's moving quickly and too much pace there. Charge called on Femi. So a couple of threes, one for each team. Mo Gee with his first three of the season. He hit a few in the exhibition for the Panthers this year, but that's his first in regular season play. And now Bunyasit over the six foot ten Gee for the triple.
It's impressive to have a guy with that length be able to shoot the three. It's a problem. Yeah, they can make that a consistent three-point look from Gee. It will be definitely di difficult to guard oh, yeah. and match up with. Panthers force a turnover. This is Burton. Marius Burton transfer from Texas Tech, playing under Chris Beard a season ago. He takes the pull-up three, and he hits it. Julius, the Panthers have struggled shooting the ball early this season, but today, so far, eight minutes in, their best three-point outing of the year by far. Coach Cable told us they needed to shoot the ball better. I'm sure he was preaching that to them in practice, and they came out, they're coming out with the confidence to get it done. The pit coming into this game at a three-point percentage of just 22%. NBC with an offensive rebound here. They get another chance from Kennedy. He knocks it down for three. Got to watch him. He'll heat up on you. And he had 21 on Tuesday in the win over American. And both these teams so far living by the three. He can't get that one, but we've seen seven three-pointers made so far in this one. 11 and a half to go. Panthers lead it by two. Back out to Burton, pump fake, drive, takes the pull up from the free throw line, can't get it to fall. Panthers trying to grab the rebound, ends up in the hands of the Retrievers. Kennedy now down low to Oweng Mensah. Even though that last possession didn't translate to points, it was a really solid possession. They let Hughley touch it down low. Double team coming, it makes it so much easier for your players. He has to be willing to make that pass to his teammates and have trust in him. Yeah, Julius, you want them to feed it to Big John. You think that's one of the keys to success today for the Panthers? I think it's hard for any team to, to guard him one-on-one. -on -one. You're going to have to consider doubling him just because of his size. I just think it makes it so much easier, especially for this pit team that's, that doesn't have, it's not at full strength at the guard position. Hughley, six foot nine, the sophomore, missed the final 15 games last season, but has been the leading scorer in the early going of this season for the Panthers as Ray Salnave gets his first points on the board to tie this one at 18. Miscommunication there. Santos tried to find Burton. Now, what you can't do is allow your offensive woes. To, train, to, to make you play defense with less energy. Something that Coach Capel talked about, you know, and it's hard to do. <laughs> yeah. You know, usually offensive, offense gets you going. It, get, it has you playing with a lot more energy. And I think he talked about that specifically about Hugh Green as a guy who has a tendency to maybe let his frustrations on offense continue on the defensive end as we see a foul in the corner and and one for Keandre Kennedy who will head to the line with a chance for a four point play. Got to close out without fouling the shooters. Oh, I don't know. What do you think? Got to give him room to land, right? Got to give him room to land, but he wasn't underneath them in my opinion. Well, I'll tell you what, they are cracking down on that type yes. of call lately. They are protecting the three-point shooter. I'm not mad at that at all. Yeah. You, you definitely should give a person, you know, room to come down comfortably without getting injured and things like that. But I always argue with the referees, so it's just something that's in my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> Did you do it more as a player or more when you're up here? It, it doesn't help you as a player, so, you know. But I just never agree with anything they have to say. <laughs> so, you know, I don't subscribe to it personally. So the Retrievers all of a sudden now on a 9-0 run over the course of the last two minutes. Panthers have not scored in the last two and a half minutes as Jamarius Burton takes a break. And in for him is Onibuchi Iziakuda for Pitt. He's going to have to give some solid minutes for Burton, for Femi. Get those guys a break, huh? Yo, to say the least, right? And he can get after it defensively. Look at him. Slow to the ground, low center of gravity. Six point lead now, UMBC. Hughley cross court finds Easy Akuda. Jab step, takes the three, knocks it down. And the Panthers' success from three point range continues. That's the fifth. 
shot from beyond the arc tonight to fall for the Panthers, but UMBC responds with one of their own. It's a shootout. It sure is. Look at that. 71% for the Panthers, 56% for the Retrievers. Look at the speed there. Tough to stay in front of that guy. He gets it up quick. He penetrates the pass. I mean, he's a guy, he's low to the ground. You know how to play basketball. Size don't matter. You know, you put me out here, I'm going to get it done. It's just that simple. So far tonight, four points, two assists for Darnell Rogers. 5-2 guard from Baltimore. Another three there falls for Wojcik. The retriever is one of the best three. The three-point shot, we can stay in any game. UMBC has knocked down their last four shots from the field, and they have their largest lead of the game at nine points now, with eight and a half left in the first half. It's just a shift in basketball. They're saying that the mid-range game, it's not worth taking the shot, just take the three. And he got it on a yo-yo right now. Ooh. You see Rogers. Rodgers? <laughs> The handles from uh, yeah. Rodgers okay. and a kick to Johnson for the triple. UMBC has it all going early. They're starting to set a win. Coach Capel tried to stop the run with the timeout, but you know. And there's the feed to Hughley. And the and one. John Hughley with his first points of the game now, and he'll head to the line to finish it off, trying for the three-point play. It's the best way to stop a run. Get a bunny and one. They need you to come alive. Yeah, that's right, Joyce. Back to your point. Hey, Rogers, when you're five foot two and you've got those handles, that's right. <laughs> the height does not matter. Yeah, you, can, you can handle the ball like that. Reach all you want. I guarantee you won't touch it. <laughs> so Hughley. It's the free throw to make it back to a single-digit ball game here. Rogers cooking, running the point for the Retrievers. This is Kennedy, uses a screen. Looked for the roll, but Panthers defended it well. <laughs> Got to figure it out another way. It's going to be hard to keep him in front of you. Panthers not shooting it badly themselves. They're 63% from long range. So here's Oda Cali re-entered the game just before the break. Trevor's doing a great job of scrambling on defense, helping on John and getting back to their shooters closing out on them. Just like that right there. He drives, kicks, has it tipped away by Owens. You got to scramble. You can't worry about your own guy. If you go on double, you got to double and, and rotate. Guys got to pick up different guys, scramble, get it done, communicate, talk to each other. Oda Cali as the shot clock expires. Couldn't get a shot up. Well defended by UMBC and LJ Owens there. Forcing Oda Cali into a tough shot. Like he tried to draw a foul there. They're not giving that to James Harden no more. They can, <laughs> definitely not going to give it to you, sir. Harden's not liking that. Huh? <laughs> not at all. Things are different this year. Lovely touch pass. It's a great pass. That's the fifth assist for Darnell Rogers. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. You got to jump on these teams early. They get a little count. They can play. Three from the top of the arc for Gee. He gets his second triple of the contest. And now that's the sixth three-pointer of the day for Pitt. So they've got 27 points. 18 of them are off the three-point shot which again is not something they're used to coming into this game as just a 22% three-point shooting team, but six triples on 67% shooting from beyond the arc today for the Panthers. Latest one was here from Mogi. 
And he's open. It's a rhythm shot. There's not many people that's going to be able to put a hand up there to, to contest that anyway at six foot ten with his arm length. So 6.20 to go here in the first half. And Hughley jostling down low with Wojcik. And foul's going to be called against Simone Wojcik. So he picks up his first. I tell you what, you have to lob that in, in there to Hughley when, he, when he's battling that hard for the ball and for pos position, good position. He got him sealed, you got to toss that up there and let him make a play. Hughley trying to find Burton down low, but four retrievers in the area, and Burton just at 6-4, unable to go up and get that one. Cali, only player in this game with two fouls, but he re-entered moments ago. Played nine minutes so far in this first half. Now here's Rogers. Scoots past the 6'10 D, but then loses it to Odakali. Odakali pushes up to Burton. Burton takes the pull up from the wing. Not that time. Rebound Kennedy. Pretty good shot in transition. Burton usually likes that mid-range jumper, Julius. Yes, sir. The lost art. You gotta have it just to keep the defense, you know, honest and even. Laid away there, rebounded by G. Santos inside to Hughley. Hughley backing down Salnave, who's 6'3", and he uses his power and his height to get the two. Feed me, Seymour. Hey, that's what that's what you said from the start. <laughs> Feed him. You got to. Come on now. That's what you gotta tell him. Kennedy from the corner, yes. Keandre Kennedy, first player today in double figures. He's got 12 points, four of five from the field, three of three from downtown. Hugley hand off to Burton. Burton can't get it to go that time. Jamarius Burton now one of six from the field in this one. I think the Panthers are getting the shots that they want, but it's on this end defensively. No, it's the not doing a good enough job getting to the shooters, not playing with enough energy. So Salnave hits his first three of the game. Looked like he knew that one was falling. Puts UMBC up 13. And that top of the key shot for Moe is going to be there. They're going to continue to double Hughley. He has to be ready to shoot that, make him pay every single time. Again, that's an assist for Hughley every single time he get that shot, even though he doesn't touch the ball. It's because of the attention that Hughley, you know, draws that's making, you know, his guys open. They're getting the shots they're looking for. Just got to knock them down, do better on defense. Another miscommunication there. Hughley looking for a teammate to pass to, and pass was taken away. And quickly after the turnover, foul committed on the Panthers. So second time today we've seen that. Panthers looking for a pass around the perimeter. Just couldn't find the intended target. And so Darnell Rogers draws the foul, and he will head to the line. Rogers, very good free throw shooter, 93% on the season. And that one makes him three of three from the line today. Fundamentals, free throw shots, you gotta knock them down. Practice them every day. It was interesting. UMBC is the second best free throw shooting team in the country, but we asked Jim Ferry, you know, how do you do that? Do you work on them a lot? What's the secret? And he said, look, the kids are just good free throw shooters. <laughs> he said, I've had teams where we work on them a ton and they can't hit an ocean. Right. But these kids, he says, are just good from the line. And that has proven very valuable for UMBC this year. Confidence. You can't psych yourself out mentally if you have a, you know, a bad stretch. Believe in yourself. Corner three from Jeffress Falls. Panthers cut the lead to 12. It's a great sign for the Panthers. Jeffress getting them to action. So both teams shooting above 70% from three point range. And UMBC with the bucket there from Obang Mensa, his first points of the outing. Retrievers now up 14. Hughley using the body to get to the rim. 
Draws the foul, puts it up and in. Happened a few years ago when you can keep carrying on that success. Right? As you should. You're the only school to ever pull that off. Hang on to off. that until somebody else do it. Because <laughs> it might be another 50 years before it happened again. They didn't just win. They beat the number one overall seed in the tournament by 20 points back in 2018. Shot the three ball pretty well in that one, too. Would you believe me if I said I picked my bracket that way? Uh, I would not believe you. <laughs> <laughs> Good, because I did. Were you one of those 1% on the ESPN <laughs> Tournament Challenge that released the results? Not at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, Coach Ferry said he had some similar games when he was at LIU. They were 15 seed, played second seed at North Carolina. They hung with them in that one, didn't get the win. But you got to love that feeling. If you're a head coach of a 15 seed, 16 seed, Opportunity to play the big dogs in the big dance. Hey, you have nothing to lose. Go That's out right. there, play your hearts out. That's what they're doing here today. Now up 13. Good for their largest lead of the game. They've had nine players contribute to the scoring offensively. Oh, to Cali, cross court pass to Gee for his third triple of the game. Oh, and this guy, 6'10, showing off his stuff from downtown. Yeah. Looking like a baby KD out there. Oh, you put him <laughs> in the same sentence as KD. I'm going to get killed for that one, huh? He's got to make a few more threes to reach KD level, I think. I got you. Well, there's another one for Owens. So the retrievers. Have exceeded 50 here in the first half. Up to a 13 point lead once again after back to back threes from each team. G wants another one, not that time. Weak side rebound and out to Rogers. These guys are playing lights out, a lot of confidence. Owens wants another. Back rim no good that time. Rebound Oda Cali. Tries to shake some defenders. Fouled on his way up. That's the right attitude. From downtown. Compact. They kind of, you know the best way, you know, Femi. You know, defensively, they're shooting the long ball. The best thing to do is to, to, to try to get baskets in transition. That's exactly what Femi tried to do. You know, hopefully they just start missing some for the Panthers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if they knocking them down, we can't get any transition. <laughs> Go to Cali in the corner. He's working on Obeng Mensah. Crosses to his right. Pump fakes, goes up again. He'll head to the line. And Julius, you notice this. Femi to Cali. Not typically a great free throw shooter, just 56% on the season. But Wednesday against Vanderbilt, 7 of 7 from the line for Femi. Yeah, I don't know if it's what he's telling himself at the line or if he's just working more in the gym. But, you know, he got it done. And he's going to have to continue to get it, get it done from the free throw line because, you know, you win and lose games at this strike. And he got the he got the, the drip on too. As though he got the Jays on his feet right now. Come on. <laughs> See, this is we, we didn't get we didn't have this opportunity at Pitt. You didn't now we was rocking we was rocking the Adidas. It looked like he come on, Femi, don't do it to him like that. <laughs> What's he got? Retro six? Look, is that the six? Okay. See, that's a recruiting tool right there. Get to rock the Just a, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's working for him at the line too, huh? Absolutely. You look good, you play good. We just got to hope that it translates defensively for the Panthers. Everybody needs the Jays on, I guess. A whistle here. And Darnell Rogers. Holding his face. I think we just got a technical foul on Jim Ferry. You can see Ferry's got his arms up along the sideline. And Julius, I think the only explanation here is that Ferry must have sent something or maybe stepped out of the coaching box there and got teed up. I think it carried over from that last call on Femi going to the basket. He didn't like that, that foul call. 
I can't say that I disagree with them, to be honest with you. So you see Rodgers kind of get maybe poked in the eye there along the perimeter. Very upset with that. Receives the technical. Jamarius Burton takes advantage of the situation and knocks down a pair of free throws for the Panthers, who are now 8 of 8 from the line in this one. And makes it a nine-point game. Mention Pitt struggles from three-point range. They also enter with the worst free throw percentage in the ACC, but how about that reverse from Rodgers? Both hands are on the rim. Got to be able to use them. I think his eyes are right. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Eight points it's now for Rodgers. He is tough. He's got five assists to go with those points. Nobody in the contest with more than that in the assist category. Gee, he wants another triple. Short that time. Collier went over the back. Foul on him. Yeah, off the dribble, you're not going to be able to stay in front of him. He's just too low, too fast. And here, just using this creativity. Left hand, he's left-handed. So, you know, what can you do? Just over a minute left in this first half. And one and one here for Simone Wojcik. Six points for him so far today for UMBC. Retrievers are now nine of ten from the free throw line in this one. Both teams shooting lights out. Retrievers just a little bit better. And yeah, that makes for a fun basketball game, huh? Yeah. 55-42, this could be the final score. And I would have believed <laughs> if you told me that before the game. I agree. Who would have known? This is easy. Akuda working on Owens. Gets a screen from Collier. Collier at the line. Outside to Burton. Rogers on him. Eight to shoot for the Panthers. Burton takes the pull up. Gets that one to fall. Get to his spots. Yep, that's his spot. Seven points for Burton. His second made field goal. A 13 second difference between shot and game clock for the retrievers here. Rodgers step back from three. Little short rebound Collier. Panthers have time for one more possession. Marius Burton brings it up the floor. He's defended by Rodgers. Screen from Collier. Got to go now. There you go. Burton drives, kicks. Jeffers for three in the corner. Not that many basketball to be played. Plenty of time for the Panthers to come back and potentially make this one interesting. Drive, nice move through from Owings. He's fouled on the way to the rim. One possession at a time. From the retrievers, that's exactly what you're looking for. Get to the basket, we have the lead. Let's get to the free throw line, knock them down. You know, in the locker room, we say, let's put our foot on their neck and get them out of here. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's, you know, no matter what locker room I was in, it seemed like that was the lingo we would use. Let's get these guys up out of here, the retrievers. This is what they're going to have to do, attack the basket and go to the line. Sometimes easier said than done, I guess. For sure. So Owen starts the scoring in the second half. Panthers rolling with Burton. G. Hughley, Oda Cali, and Jeffress as they set up their first offensive possession. Oda Cali turned it over, but officials say he was fouled as he tried to slice through the defense there. And looks like it'll be called on LJ Owens. And for Owens, that's his first foul of the game. What he use his body coming off the screen? No. Oh. What do you think? <laughs> Did look like a lot of ball. Yeah. Again, you know, I always side with the player. Every call the referee calls to me is a bad call. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if it's on me as a player. Lefty stroke. Not that time for Rodgers. Rebound Hughley. Jamarius went the ball on the block. 
Let's try it out one time. And feed Big John there. Foul called. Rogers has been beaten up a couple times so far in this one. Took a hit there, too. We get another look, putting his arm up. He's there right on time, though. As soon as the ball gets to John Hughley, the double team is right on time. Rodgers was called for the foul there, his first. But hey, he is fearless. Going up against the 6'9", Hughley. 5'2", Darnell Rodgers. Go to Cali. Eight to shoot for the Panthers. They're now 13. Go to Cali wants the ISO. He takes it. Goes up strong off the glass. Can't hit. Tipped by Hughley. Offensive rebound, Jeffress. Oda Cali for the triple. Back rim, no good. Rebound, Rodgers. Kennedy, strong take to two. Kennedy's getting everything he wants right now. 14 for Keandre Kennedy. Averages 14.6 on the season. He's having a day. Knocking down the three, doing it off the dribble. So now the Retrievers increase their largest lead of the game. This is it here at 15. Burton has to shoot here. Well defended by Rodgers. Panthers get the offensive rebound. Burton was screaming for it on the low block, but Hughley goes up and puts a nice shot in there for two. Burton tried to get Rodgers off the ground, but I don't, I don't you know. Jump for what? <laughs> That's what he's thinking. I'm not going to commit to jumping. I'm just going to contest your shot. I know I'm not going to block it, is what Rogers is saying. <laughs> hey, he's doing what he can, though. For sure. But blocking jump shots is definitely not in his repertoire. <laughs> This is Simone Wojcik coming in for UMBC. He had a great first half as well. Eight points for him on two of two shooting. And both of those shots coming from beyond the arc for Wojcik. Five to shoot off the inbound for the Retrievers. Rogers sneaks along the baseline, has a pass tipped away by Burton. So they will inbound now with two to shoot. He is so crafty and hard to stay with. Rodgers, that is. Yeah, Jim Ferry made it clear that his career is not done when he's finished at UMBC. This is a guy that can continue to play basketball. And how about that? Retrievers with a great play off the inbound as Wojcik's into double figures. Tough shot. Have to tip your hat to him on that one. Well done by Wojcik. Gee looking for his fourth three of the game, and he nails it. Got to get a stop, get a basket, get a stop. Get a basket, get a stop. Deep three there, swatted away by Gee. Both ends, he's getting it done, finishes with a two-handed jam. Active hands. How's that for momentum, Julius? Yeah, got to stay after it. One at a time, though. Got to chip away, chip away. D up to 14 points on the day in his best outing as a Pittsburgh Panther. They look to continue their success. They've made their last three field goals on the offensive end. Burton with the spin. He goes baseline. Swings. One more to Jeffress for three. Back rim no good. Hughley fighting for the board. Ends up in the hands of Owens. It's out of possession. Jeffress grabs the rebound. Panthers pushing tempo off the miss. Oda Cali shaking the defender. Goes up strong. He's fouled. Burton defending Kennedy. Now up to Salnave. He shakes Gee. Goes up. Tried to find Rogers in the corner. Well done by Jeffress to hustle over. Solid 11 seconds left. Deflections is good too. So on this end, if, I'm, if you're the Panthers, got to get it done defensively in order to get back in this basketball game. 
After a 55-point first half, UMBC held to six so far in the first five minutes of the second half. Rogers has been kept in check from three-point range. He's 0 of 4 now after that last miss. Burton cross court to Oda Cali. Rogers on him. Oda Cali down low to Hughley. Hughley gets the defender in the air. He'll head to the line. It's a good move. They're feeding him. Keep his composure. He has good feet, good balance. You know, the one thing I would want to see from Hughley is even if he's not scoring a basketball, I feel like he's supposed to dominate on the glass. And like, if he can consistently just make it his business to go out there and get the 10 rebounds every game, the points is going to fall in place. Hughley averaging 7.2 rebounds a game on the season. Only three today, though. So you're right, Julius, at 6-9. And on a pit team that needs production from him, and especially Mogi as well. They're two main bigs. Got to have rebounding from him. Without a doubt. Can't just want to do it when things are going well offensively. He got to want that to be a staple. And two missed free throws there. That doesn't help as well for Hughley and the Panthers. Hughley on Salnave. That's your big man, six foot nine. Closing out to a shooter in the corner. I'd like to see that. Rodgers drives, kicks. And a foul called on the Panthers. Solid foul, make him earn it from the line. Don't want to give up the bunny. What do you see in defensively, Julius, in the early going in this second half that's maybe different for Pitt? Well, I think they're doing a better job uh, containing the penetration. That definitely helps when, you know, the retrievers want to kick out to those open shooters. So because they're doing a better job keeping a guy in front of them, they're not really getting those open shots. It's just that energy. You know, if you get beat, you got to call for help and you got to scramble. It's all communication. We talk about momentum shifts and big plays like that last one from Mo Gee. How much do you actually feel it when you're out on the floor? Do you feel those momentum shifts and how much do they contribute to turning the game around? Uh, it's huge, you know, especially when you, you make a play on defense and it turns into a play on offense. You just got to keep the energy going. Cali's starting to get going here. He's hyped up, trying to pump up the crowd here in the Peterson Events Center after that one. Makes it an eight-point game. Retrievers led by as many as 15 so far in this one. And a travel there. Panthers force a turnover. And everyone on that Panther bench now on their feet. As Pitt with a chance to cut this down to a two-possession basketball game. You know, it's a tad tougher. You know, the Panthers feed off the Oakland Zoo being here. They get a lot, a lot of their energy from the student section, who's away at home with their family right now. So, you know, it's a little more difficult. <laughs> That's right, Oakland Zoo always helps to have them in the crowd and official stopping some of the momentum there with a call Jeff Capel and John Hughley don't seem to agree with. They got him for an offensive foul. And so that is the third now on John Hughley. Panthers also have three players with two, Gee, Burton, and Oda Cali. A triple too strong there from Salnave, rebound by Jeffress. Jeffress is the leading rebounder for the Panthers today with six. Hughley down low, backing down the defender, block called and one, John Hughley. I agree with that call 100%. It's the one thing about, you know, officiating the big guys. You know, big guys always feel like, you know, they take a lot of abuse down here, which, which, which they do. And because they're so big, usually they call that against them, but referee wasn't going for it this time. Can't sell that one. That's the type of aggression you got to have as a big man, right, Julius? We were talking earlier about some of the bigs the Panthers have had in years past, and you just didn't always seem to see that use of the body, that physicality that John Hughley has. Yeah, he got that old school Big East type body. That's right. The one, <laughs> you know, you know that Deron Blair. That. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ontario left. Kennedy working on Jeffress. Kicks out to Owens. 
Steps back, three to shoot for the Retrievers. Salnave too strong. Rebound over to Cali. Panther defense has stepped up in this second half. Got to give credit to Jeffers on that last possession. Kennedy got it going, you know. Played him very well. Jeffers with six rebounds. That's more than anybody else in this game. And now a three from Oda Cali won't go. Rebound by Owens, and he distributes to Rogers. Rogers finds an open teammate. Oba and Mensah hits the mid ranger. This is their tempo. Push it. Get the best open shot. That's what they were doing in the first half. Got back to it on that possession. Jim Ferry told us that's one thing that will be a key for the Retrievers today, getting the Panthers to play at the pace UMBC wants to play at. They did it there, and now Darnell Rogers is up to seven assists in the game. D for his fifth three-pointer of the game, not that time. Rebound to Ben Mensah, and an outlet to Owens. Got to contain the penetration. 13 to shoot for UMBC. Gee defending Salnave. He steps back, crosses up Gee. Pump fakes, has a shot. Foul called on Mo Gee. of 17 from the free throw line today. Here's William Jeffress outside to Burton. He's Line working hard. He got the mismatch down. Oh, he missed the opportunity. Here's Gee, two to shoot now for the Panthers. Got to get one up. Burton will take it. And in and out, some contact, no call. Offensive rebound for the Panthers ends up in the hands of Gee. Now over to Oda Cali. And a foul call. So who'd you see? Who was the mismatch you saw open down low? John Hughley had Kennedy down on the block with him, which is a clear mismatch. And the minute that they had the chance to switch back, they switched back in a hurry. <laughs> Great heads up play by the Retrievers. Got to give it to them. Now they find Hughley. Look like a little flex action right there. Rogers tightly on Burton. Burton to his right, cross court to Gee. Three to shoot. Gee has it stripped away. Kennedy pushes up to Bunyasith. And Retrievers will set up shop, find Rogers, and he will slow things down. Smart play. Get a good shot. Right now, Rogers. Tosses one up for Obeng Mensah. Kicked out to Kennedy. Kennedy knocks it down for the first, first UMBC three of the half. And that wasn't an easy one with Muhammadu closing out at you. Keandre Kennedy up to 17 points on 4 of 4 shooting from three point range. So, just like that, UMBC's lead is back up to 12. And Jamarius Burton now called for an offensive foul. That's going to be the fourth foul on Burton. What do you think of that one, Julius? I mean, he used his body to protect the basketball. I'm not a fan. You know, Rogers plays aggressive. He has to. Um, now that's when I would let go, but you know, this is why they don't give me the striped shirt. Because if it was up to me, this would be a football game. <laughs> if you leave it up to a guy like myself, we wouldn't have any calls. Both coaches would be kicked out from yelling at me. So Burton, who's got seven points on two of nine shooting today, heads to the bench with four as Keandre Kennedy. Puts the two in to make it 19 for him. And just like that, the Retrievers are back up 14. And it seems that any momentum the Panthers had is starting to fade away. Still 9.20 to go. And they still have John Hughley in there. He draws the foul there. But the Retrievers seem to be finding the flow that they had offensively in that first half again. Yeah, and if you're going to let guys get to the basket that easy for uncontested layups, you have no chance at coming back in this basketball game. So here's Hughley. He's 3 of 5 from the line today on the season. A 67% shooter from the strike. And 
John Hughley, a guy that was actually recruited by Jim Ferry when Ferry was at Penn State for the last few seasons. Ferry, the interim head coach at Penn State last year, went after Hughley and said that we're going to have to put pressure on him today, going to have to get him to play at their pace. And for a while in that first half, retrievers were successful at containing John Hughley, but Julius Panthers are feeding him more so in this second half, and he's made a difference. He'll wear on you also. You know, early on in the game, when you have fresh legs, it'll work. As the game goes on, it's going to get tougher and tougher. It's a big body. Now 71-59, the UMBC lead after the free throws from Hughley. Santos can't hang on to the rebound there. And Retrievers get a second chance possession here. Salne, baseline, step back shot. Too strong. Rebound Oda Cali on the weak side. Got to get a solid possession. And there's the all defensive player, Rogers, stripping it off Femi Oda Cali. Beautiful pass to Obang Mensa. Oda Cali fouls him on his way out. Rogers know when to push the tempo. You know, a couple possessions ago, he went and got the ball, slowed it down, wanted to get a better shot here. He's pushing tempo. Let's get an easy one. And he's such an intelligent basketball player, Darnell Rogers. And Jim Ferry said, don't miss dribble the basketball around Darnell Rogers. And we saw why there. Femi Cali, despite the height advantage of about 15 inches over Rogers, still had it stripped away by the senior guard from Baltimore. It's tough. You know, he's low to the ground. He's active. He's strong. You cannot be lazy with that ball around him. Now Obeng Mensa up to six now on the day. Oda Cali almost wanted the three, drove and drew the foul there on Salnave, who picks up his third. They're playing that pick and roll aggressively, though. They're attacking it instead of letting the Panthers attack them. Femi's two of five from three on the day. You like him faking that three-point shot, taking it to the rim, or you want to see him take that, especially down 13? Well, his game is usually to go to the basket and slash, so, you know, I prefer him to do what he's most comfortable with, but you're just knowing that when he has the open three to take it. But even if he miss, I know he feels that John has a chance to clean up for him, so can't really lose with those options. Oda Cali having a good shooting day, not only from three-point range, but from the line as well. He's now five of six from the charity stripe after coming in as a 59% free throw shooter. Owens the three, rims out, rebound Jeffress. Oda Cali with it. He's got 15, feeds Hughley, Hughley up and in for two. Early and often. In transition, he's running that floor. Get it to him. The Panthers cut it back down to single digits. Bird with the step back. That was pretty. And he's new to the game. Hakeem Bird with just five minutes in this one so far, but a big basket there for his first field goal in this one. It was a tough shot right there. Rhythm shot off the dribble with step back. I like it. Jeffers all the way cross court to Santos for three. Not that time. Nate Santos struggling from the field today. He's now 0-3. Owens drives and kicks, finds Bird. Can he hit another? Not that time. Rebound Jeffers. Jeffers up to eight boards on the day. Oda Cali with a few retrievers on him, doesn't matter, takes it all the way in for two. He signed what a vision over to the perimeter, then find Owens in the corner for the three. That's just excellent basketball. Dribble pen penetration pass to an open shooter who passes up the shot for a better shot. It's a shame that 
Rogers doesn't get the hockey assist on that one because his pass, I think, was the most impressive pass of that possession to the outside. And now Hughley on the other end. I'm glad you brought that up, Jason, because they, we, I think basketball, you know, we have to you know, incorporate that hockey assist. It's a shame it doesn't get on the stat sheet. I'll say that, because that was a pretty pass there from Rogers. For sure. Just keep going inside to the guy. Let him touch it. Is what's working for you? Is what's worked best? They're looking in. Looks like they were giving Jeffers the three there. He didn't want it. Off to go inside to Hughley instead. Hughley's a beast down low, gets his own rebound, puts it back in. <laughs> it's a big boy right there. Better you than me. I wouldn't want to be down there <laughs> battling with him. <laughs> He's got 21 now. That's his second highest scoring total of the season. Had 27 in the season opener against the Citadel. Brings the Panthers down eight. Hughley defending Wojcik. Wojcik goes past Hughley. Can't get the shot to fall. Hughley didn't like the call. It'll be the fourth foul on John Hughley. But hey, let's take a look at Darnell Rogers here. The vision yeah. to find Bunyasith and then the swing for one more. Yeah, passed up a good shot for a better shot. And this is Hughley being a man out here. Wojcik doesn't want that. <laughs> <laughs> well, not many do. You know, that's a, that guy right there is, you know, what's the 280? 6'9", 280? 6'9", 280, Hughley, at Brush High School in Cleveland, Ohio. He's the number 95 player in the ESPN Top 100 coming out of high school. And this is what the Panthers brought him in to do. He has been a force in this one. 21 points, 8 of 10 shooting from the field. Six rebounds for the Panther big as well. Last year he wasn't able to get a real true rhythm. It almost feels like a freshman year for these guys. Yeah. To to this shoot. guy. Burton drives, spins, pretty move with the right hand, just can't get it to drop. Clock continues to tick down. Panthers certainly still in this game, but time starting to slip away, and UMBC is content to burn as much clock as they want to. Jim Ferry sitting back, arms on the scorer's table, certainly not in a hurry here for the Retrievers. Rogers drives, five to shoot for them. Turns around, can't get that one to go. Rebound, Hughley. He's crafty down there. <laughs> you gotta love it. He's slippery. You gotta love it. Tough to stay in front of him. Now here's Oda Cali. Working on Rogers, fouled on his way to the rim. Rogers picks up his third foul. So less than four minutes to go, Panther. Getting a stop and getting a basket. Got to chip away at it. Surprised Gee not tempted to take that three there. Gee's four from eight from three so far today. He backs off that one. Gee inside the Hughley pass intercepted by Kennedy. Kennedy in transition, and the Retrievers will slow it down. Solid defense. They know where they want to go with the, the basketball, Hughley. That's the 14th turnover of the game for the Panthers. The Retrievers have done well taking care of it. Only eight turnovers from UMBC. Rodgers with six to shoot. Kennedy is open. Crosses up Odakali. Back to Rodgers. An NBA three for him. Too strong. Rebound by Femi Odakali. The shooting free throws. I would want to get something going to the basket. High percentage shot or get to the free throw line and make the free throws. Oda Cali drives, kicks to Jeffers for three. Not that time, strong rebound from Wojcik. 
And a foul called as Wojcik brought it down. Looks like it'll go on Odukali, who's holding his ankle there after he picked up the foul. That is Femi's fourth. So now the Panthers have Odukali, Burton, and John Hughley all with four fouls apiece. Three of the most important contributors they've had in this contest. With two and a half to go, going to be important that he can keep all of them on the floor, Jeff Capel. Oh, they don't have a choice but to stay now. It's crunch time. I don't know if he can afford to take them out. Jeff Capel and the Panthers down eight. It's a tough job for Coach Capel, though. He has a short bench, missing two players, two two key guys that he was going to, you know, rely a lot on. You know, rotation-wise, you know, just makes his job that much difficult. Ruta Cali, 2-10 to go here at the Peterson Event Center. Drives, finds Jeffress cutting down low. He's fouled. Femi is willing his way through it. Fighting through injury. It's limping around. But for Pitt, this is the type of leadership they need from Odakali and Hughley. For sure. Going into the year, those are the two guys, right? Those are the two names, John Hughley and Femi Odakali. Coming out today, combining for 40. That's the type of production you expect from those two. And it's tough. UMBC has had an outstanding shooting day. But if you're Coach Capel to see Femi and Hughley have the days that they've had today, that's an encouraging sign. Lead by example, and Femi trying to, you know, basically play through limping around. Yeah. You know, that's setting an example. You know, that he, he's not quitting. Jeffress can't connect on either free throw, so that's going to hurt the Panthers. He's now 0 of 3 from the line today. Jeffress entered this contest as a 67% free throw shooter on the season. Nine-point game, under two minutes. Easy Akuda staying patient, defending Darnell Rogers. Panthers not going to foul just yet. Rogers uses a screen. Slips past Easy Akuda and across the paint. Three to shoot for the Retrievers. Step back from Owens from three. Yes! LJ Owens with a big-time triple for UMBC to put him up 12. That was a huge shot. Huge. And fading away from the basket to Julius. Off balance, an incredible shot from LJ Owens, who's now got 18 points, second most on the Retrievers today. Panthers decided not to foul. They took some time off and stepped back three. Take it with confidence, shoot it with confidence. And knock it down. Yeah, that's about the worst possible outcome you could have on that possession if you're picked, because you let them use the shot clock. You let them run it down, and they still come away with three points. But that's been the story of the day for UMBC, who now has 14 made three-pointers in the game. Only thing they have to do now is not foul. If I'm, if I'm Coach Ferry, I'm telling them, play defense without fouling. We do not want to send them to the line, stop the clock, and get baskets. Julius, this UMBC team was picked to finish fifth in the America East this year. I don't know about you, but I'm starting to question that. Me too. You know, I, I'm not a big fan of the preseason rankings anyway. Yeah. But yeah, this team is definitely a lot better than fifth. Retrievers will improve to four and two if they can close this one out here in Pittsburgh. Still time, minute and 20 to go. Burton swings out to Gee. Panthers need to move quickly if they want to come back here. Seven to shoot for him. Odakali to Burton. Retrievers making it tough, playing strong defense, and they come up with the rebound too. Panthers still not immediately fouling here as the Retrievers Look to be pulling away with this one with 45 to go and, well, 20 seconds into the shot clock there, Julius, they do commit the foul. Yeah. I don't know why. Um, it should have did it, like you said, yeah. you know, right away. But, I, you know, it comes down to a free throw contest. If they want to get in, they will have to get a stop, which they haven't had many of um, today. 
It's frustrating. It's part of the process, though. You learn from these games. You learn from having to scratch and claw back, get stops, get high percentage shots. It's not something that you learn overnight. With a team that's losing two key pieces and have, you know, Femi, who's a sophomore, Hughley, who's a sophomore, relying on young guys, they just don't have the experience, um, not as of right now, <clears throat> to win games like this. Darnell Rogers, what a game for him. 10 points, eight assists, six of six from the free throw line, leading the Retrievers to their fourth win of the season. Jeffress trying to do what he can to keep it alive here, but they're down 11 after that three. And foul one more time as Jeffress commits his second. Jeffress, the leading rebounder for Pitt today with those eight boards. Athletic guy, plays with energy. Just got to get you know more confident in his offense and game. Keep slashing, keep slashing, do what you do best, baby. So coming up for the Retrievers, they'll have Columbia on Wednesday before going on the road for three straight games at Delaware. They'll take on Georgetown and Princeton. But a signature win today and their second all-time victory over an ACC program for UMBC. Jeffress knocks down another one. That's Jeff Capel, sign. that's right, Julius. Jeffress hits the three there again. Jeff Capel, however, will call off the dogs. And the Retrievers will come away from Pittsburgh with a 10-point win.